This is a sketch for a string quartet that I wrote for Del Sol Quartet um, called Mud Nest Signals. And it's a study on vibrations, really. So I, I chose this image because I feel that much of my work and what I do is about studying vibrations, whether they're visual, uh, movement, or sound. So in this um, sketch you see um, some painted um, areas of color with gouache, and then there is another painting that I did that is a pink square or a pink rectangle with a blue oval, and I filmed that and then projected it onto the paper um, of gouache. And so you see this combination of two different sort of dimensions coming together, two different worlds, and suddenly they're interacting um, in a way that I find very interesting. So of course you, you can see the colors mixing where the yellow and the blue are mixing to form a green but they're mixing in this sort of almost virtual way because there's no green on the paper. It's just the light of the projection mixing with the, the paint, the light reflecting off the paint. Um, and so I find this also very uh, much true to perhaps how I envision work or create work is just bringing different worlds and different medium together and um, seeing how they interact. This is a tricky question, I think. On one hand, I feel like when you ignore the question and you just go about doing your work, like that's one mode that I operate in. I, I want to ignore the fact that there is an issue because then you are equalizing in your own worldview, your position in it, right? At the same time, you can't be blind to the fact that there are inequalities. And so there's a really fine line, I feel, that we all have to walk because when you accept that there are inequalities, that can also lead to a kind of internalized oppression or feeling that there is a problem or that you are less than. Um, or that, you know, there, there are cons. And, and then on the other hand, when you ignore it, you also are being blind to the realities. You don't always know when people in their minds think that you are actually less than they are. At the same time, I'm not gonna assume that about anybody. You know, I wanna give people the benefit of the doubt and give them the best. Um, that I can offer as a person and expect them to give them give me the same. And of course, it's not always going to be like that. But I've been also very blessed to have, you know, many opportunities and help from many men. And so I want to also acknowledge that. I think one of the pros is that um, in a way, there's a certain freedom when you feel like there's not so much of a history that you've belonged to. Yes, you might say, well, that history just has not been, you know, brought up to our awareness. It's been his story, not her stories. And so we're just not aware of those stories. We are a part of them, but they're just buried. Um, but also that, that there's this feeling that, well, if I don't belong, I don't have to fit in. I don't have to um, do things a certain way. And I can really just carve out my own world and um, create in a way that I want to and have that sense of freedom. And so there is um, perhaps a little bit of an advantage in that feeling.
Well, I believe it's really important for women to make music, for more women to make music, to cultivate that, to um, encourage and to support um, all of this creativity. Because I have the theory that um, because the world in so many um, religious texts came through the act of sound. So like the creation myths um, in many different cultures have to do with, you know, sound, like the big bang or in the Bible, the beginning, the word was God. And the word came out and then the world was created. So I have this theory that um, because sound and vibration is what creates the world and what continues to shape the world, that we have to keep, as women, we have to continue to make music to contribute to the evolution and the shaping of the whole world. The more we do it, I believe, the better it will be. Because up until now, it's largely been shaped by the music of men. this reoccurring dream for, well, since the last maybe 15 years where I have like this really thick paste and it's just like gobs of it stuck in my mouth and kind of down my throat. And I have to just like really get my, dig my fingers in there and gouge it out and like pull out these wads of like thick, thick clay. And it's, uh, it's just an awful feeling. It's an awful dream um, that, you know, like no matter what I do and how much energy I spend, it's like, doesn't quite come out. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with using my voice and um, singing and creating work with my voice and maybe the metaphor of, you know, getting my voice out. It passes unnoticed. When I leave this world, I don't really think I would want any objects with me. Um, I have experienced myself outside of my own body, and that has really given me this awareness that we are so much more than our physical, material selves, even though that's a huge part of us. And um, obviously a very important vehicle we have to deal with in this life. Um, but I feel that in the afterlife, I wouldn't really necessarily want any particular objects from here because I don't feel like I would need them. I feel that what I would need would be in my awareness and in my experiences and in the learning that I have done, will have done by the time I leave. Um, so yeah, I would want to go as lightly as possible. <laughs>